Hi, this is Stacey Chalemi from The Advisor, and today I'm very excited because we have a very special guest. Her name is Sophia Sari, and she is a um, holistic coach, and she specializes in different types of um, things such as anger, anxiety, stress, depression. And these are things that we're going to talk about today. And one of the things that I thought would be really valuable for our listeners is to let's let deep uh, dig deep into depression, because a lot of us go through depression. We struggle every day, you know, whether you have a, a um, you suffer from depression because you have a mental illness or just because you're having a tough time and then life just gets to you and you fall into a hole and you suffer from depression and you just don't know how to reach those goals that you you want to reach at the end of the day. So how do we do it? How do we get through a life that's so hectic and a life that has so many different things that we have to worry about on a daily basis and not fall into a hole and not let life's obstacles get the best of us? Well, today, Sophia is going to tell us different ways that we can overcome are the the obstacles in our lives and how we could actually, if we're feeling depressed or if we have a mental illness and we suffer from depression, how can we improve our lives? And Sophia is going to tell us today. So Sophia, take it away. Tell everybody what you do and give them a little bit of background about you. Uh, thanks, Stacey. Um, I'm Sophia and I'm a coach psychotherapist, which means I am dual trained. Uh, I am both a coach and a psychotherapist. And the reason being is that there is a new trend, um, especially because of the current needs, um, because of the pandemic and um, the diversity, as well as the organizational turnover, um, people want uh, to be able to have um, solutions and have therapists who are able to enable them to hold their distress while um, helping them achieve uh, their goals. Um, so this is basically uh, my background and what I do. Uh, what is different uh, from other coaches or a psychotherapist, uh, other than the, than the fact that I'm dual trained, is that I'm also, I have a holistic approach. Um, and when I say holistic approach, uh, I mean, um, looking at the root of the problem rather than just the symptoms. And uh, by this, I have uh, developed my own method, which is called fast therapy. Uh, I'm just going to tell you briefly what each letter stands for. Um, F is for functional, A is for awareness, S is for self-regulation, and T is for therapy. So I basically have, um, as I mentioned, instead of just pathologizing or looking at um, mental illness and right. uh, looking at problems, um, I very much uh, have the belief that uh, it's more about mental wellness rather than mental illness. Right. And uh, that's people, um, it's, it's like basically a system, if we take our body and our mind, uh, there is uh, whatever we input, uh, whether it's the food that we eat or whatever we listen to or read or uh, watch, Right. Um, as well as um, whatever people we surround ourselves with, all of this have an impact on our uh, mental health and well-being. Mm -hmm. And this is what led me to um, come up with this fast therapy um, to provide uh, a, a holistic approach to, to mental health. And this, this especially for depression. You know, I find that, you know, it, it's 
so many people, especially doctors nowadays, you know, they hear somebody they're feeling, they're feeling down, they're suffering depression. They might not even be diagnosed with a, a mental illness of depression or manic depression. And the doctor will immediately, because the person has been feeling this way for a while, they'll write them out a prescription for depression. And then that person is on the medications and there's so many different ones. And they say they feel like a zombie walking around. They don't feel like themselves. You know, they can't, their cognitive the skills has slowed down instead of looking at things from a holistic approach and that you know because sometimes you know you may have to take medication but a lot of times we can overcome we can change our lives and we can retrain the brain to think a different way and to overcome obstacles and when we do learn how to overcome obstacles in a productive manner a lot of times we can you know, slowly get ourselves out of that depression. And it seems like that's something that you really focus on is trying to get people out of depression and trying to show people how to achieve their goals while life isn't so perfect because perfect really isn't a real word, is it? It's, you know, there is no such thing as perfect. Absolutely. Well, th there is also something about the wording. You mentioned mental illness mm -hmm. and there is a difference between mental health. Yes, and mental illness. Yes, there is. So mental illness is very much about the conditions that mm -hmm. are usually uh, diagnosed by specialists. Yes. And this can this is very much linked to the genes or uh, brain chemistry. Mm -hmm. And it's almost like once there is a label, um, it's very difficult to remove that label. And it's almost like the only solution is... Um, conventional uh, medicine and medication. Now, having said that, and, and you actually said it very well, or it was very well put, that it is possible to um, suffer from mental illness and still cope and still build resilience and still, still, able, still be able to have a, I don't want to use the word normal, <laughs> but yeah. uh, be able to function. Yes. Mm-hmm. Exactly. Now, there is the whole stigma about mental health is is very much because people confuse or the words are used uh, interchangeably. So people talk about mental health and talk about mental illness, and they are two different things. Yes. Because mental health fluctuates uh, depending on life experience right. and can impact the way we think, the way we behave which is quite different from mental illness. Exactly, exactly. And a lot of times too, I think is also the environment we grow up in. A lot of people will grow up in a specific environment and they'll see negative behavior and immediately they'll, they'll pick up over time that negative behavior and they may not even realize that they are demonstrating that negative behavior as they grow up. And then this cycle occurs and it goes from one, one family to the next family to the next family, because it, you know, people don't realize sometimes when they are exemplifying, you know, negative behavior and a lot of times you know people sometimes people are our worst own enemies because we sometimes we pick up negative behavior we don't realize that we're exemplifying it and if you don't correct it you know eventually sometimes it could even destroy the person because you're kind of digging your own grave you know you're causing your depression in a sense because people focus on the worst of the worst you know and sometimes people you know they they don't know how to cope with life and they don't you know they focus on the negative and what happens when you focus on the negative and you don't focus on the positive right yeah absolutely there are as you mentioned uh unconscious processes Mm -hmm. where um, people growing up in a certain environment will mimic certain behaviors. And if they don't actually develop a certain awareness, uh, it, it is very unlikely for them to realize what is causing certain behavior and what is causing mental health problems. Right, right. And, and this is also the reason why part of the fast therapy is the awareness. Yeah. Uh, it's very much bringing... Um, the awareness and making the unconscious conscious yes because I think when we before we started the show you had mentioned get into the root cause in a sense yes 
And, you know, I think that's the most important thing because anytime we exemplify depression or any type of, of negative emotion or behavior, you know, there is a root cause. There is a root cause why it's happened and whether it's a traumatic event in our life or it's the way we brought up, you know, or whatever the cause may be, you know, there's always a root cause. And once a lot of times people find out what that root cause is, their lives do a turnaround. Absolutely. Yeah. And this is why for me, the most important thing is very much implementing a lifestyle. Mm -hmm. And um, of course, there is there is the lifestyle, but there is also um, the, as I'm, I'm, I think I mentioned it er earlier, um, a psycho-spiritual approach. I'd love to learn more about that. Can you explain what that is? So when I say psycho-spiritual approach, it's very much... There is the talking therapy uh, in my work, but there is also uh, something about meaning. Mm -hmm. So it, it's more spiritual it, rather yeah. than just um, basically like being um, just chasing the wrong things or surround or having the wrong relationships. Right. When I mentioned the input and the people uh, we surround ourselves with, uh, if the relationships are not meaningful, there this will have an impact on mental health. Oh yeah, Definitely. and same as finding purpose, and that's what I meant by meaning. So, uh, when relationships are mean meaningful, when there is a sense of purpose, everything changes. Right. Yeah. And so what type of changes, like, can you go a little deeper and explain to our audience you know, a meaningful relationship that has purpose, that's positive, you know, what type of changes will you see in that, in that person as they grow into that relationship and they grow as a person? Well, there is a feeling of uh, um, satisfaction, mm -hmm. I would say, right. uh, um, a feeling of uh, being aligned. Mm-hmm. Uh, rather than just pretending right and when I say aligned is very much whatever people think and do and feel everything right. is is aligned so when there is a meaningful relationship there is there will be no need for pretending right and, and no need for playing a role which is very exhausting and yeah. this can lead to burnout and depression as well uh, that this can contribute to their depression. I wouldn't say that's the only element, but uh, this can lead to stress and frustration um, mm -hmm. when people feel seen, heard. Yeah. Um, there is a, an ability to communicate uh, the sense of belonging. Right. Uh, being able to relate. Mm -hmm. All these have a positive impact. And right. it, 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 it's, 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 a, uh, it's a big elements uh, for um, people's well-being, I would say. Oh, I, I, I agree a hundred percent, you know, and, and, you know, I've seen it in a lot of clients where, you know, they will, they will put on the facade and they will try to prove to others that their relationship is perfect. And, you know, you can only do that for so long, just like an actor. That's why actors have short roles. You know, you can only, you can only make believe for so long, but in, and even I think, you know, but inside your, your emotions, your, you, you feel like you're getting worn down you're you're feeling the depression because this facade that you're creating is not what you really are truly as a person you know and that could in itself be very depressing you know Absolutely. just making believe you're someone you're not you know and that will also like you said lead to burnout you know now, what if a person's in a, sometimes I see a lot of people in denial and they're in unhealthy relationships, but they're in denial. Like, what are some of the symptoms of an unhealthy relationship? If a person's in denial, what types of self-awareness do they look for? Like, is there certain signs and symptoms that people uh, have? Are you, would you say um, in within a relationship or within yeah. a job or? Within a relationship for now, yeah. Okay, uh, I would say uh, frust feeling frustrated mm -hmm. is would probably be the the main one. Right. Where there's this constant feeling of frustration, where there is something they can't really 
pinpoint at and that that is not that doesn't feel right right uh there are also feelings of loneliness mm -hmm. uh, because loneliness mainly comes from miscommunication or lack yeah. of communication mm -hmm. um and uh yeah and potentially anxiety and depression right and i would say these would be the the the, the main um symptoms or uh, characteristics you know, so, so you have, let's say you have these type of symptoms and then you have to, you, like you said, you go to work and then you have a job to fulfill. You know, a lot of times our relationships at home, if we don't have stability, will interfere with the progress and, and, and our jobs in general, you know, and will that lead to burnout? Don't you think? Um, this could be one element, even if when we talk about burnout, uh, people automatically think about um, feeling exhausted at work. Right. Because they, they there is this feeling of frustration or feeling that there is this lack of drive. Mm -hmm. um, they, this feeling of stagnation where everything goes wrong. <laughs> Nothing is actually at the, at the right place. Yeah. And yes, the burnout can impact it. I think it goes both ways. So the burnout can impact the personal relationships where people would no longer want to um, feel um, joy or, or share happy moments with uh, with their friends or their or even their partners. Right. And because it goes both ways, obviously, the uh, the, the impact of the relationships, mainly the relationships with partners, will impact the quality of the work because this will impact the focus, the concentration, the motivation as well. Um, so I would say it's both ways. So if someone is feeling the symptoms of depression, are there some some tips that you can give people on to help them? You know, like things that you might do in your own practice? So, well, when we talk about depression, uh, if, if we're talking about uh, the pathology, uh, there are a few signs such as insomnia and uh, um, lack of drive and uh, not, not wanting to, to, to do much, um, not enjoying the activities that people used to enjoy. Uh, but I would say that there are a few things. Uh, first of all, asking themselves uh, the right questions, such as, uh, do I like my job, <laughs> for example? Is it a, a healthy environment? Is it a toxic environment? Because perhaps it comes from a, it all comes from a toxic environment. Um, not necessarily from the nature of the job itself, but Perhaps just the work environment is toxic. Right. So I, I would ask, I would ask them to ask themselves the right questions. Um, so for their job, that would be the nature of the job, the the environment, um, and the nature of the relationships. Uh, what is happening? What is going on with their partners? What is going on with their friends or family? Uh, what is it that is missing? Or they're uh, basically um, just coping with life or they're actually living and enjoying life? Or right. Do they feel purposeful or is it just because of what society requires in terms of uh, paying the bills and <laughs> And yeah. having an income. Um, so I would perhaps asking the right questions. And the main thing for me would be uh, if we don't necessarily focus on relationships and on work, which is because it's not necessarily what makes someone's identity. Um, if, uh, if we think on a more of a practical, um, practical solutions, Mm -hmm. uh, I would, I would just ask them to ask themselves, uh, what is the, what is their lifestyle? Yeah. Uh, is whatever they're eating or how their be their behavior, uh, is it actually causing more problems, or is it actually um, helping them thrive? Right. So. Yeah. 
this would be for me like the main element uh, and the main, uh, in terms of tips, that that would be like the main element for me, the, the lifestyle. Now you mentioned earlier, you talked about, um, you know, going through depression because your life, you know, you might have certain obstacles in it, but then being able to still achieve your goals. You know, how do you do that when you're going through life, you're going through challenges, you feel down, you feel hopeless, maybe, and you still want to achieve your goals. You know, how do you get through that? And how do you actually, you know, get to that, that point in your life where you still can achieve your goals, even though you might be going through some rough patches in your life? So I wouldn't use the word depression in that, that case. I would Mm -hmm. just say, uh, if if you're facing challenges right. or difficulties, uh, it's very much about building resilience. Okay. Uh, and p- part of building resilience is implementing self-regulation strategies. Right. And for me, the m- main or my favorite self-regulation s- strategy is... Um, self-talk positive self-talk yeah simply because uh research suggests that positive self-talk enables people to have a positive outlook on life and enables them to cope with difficulties in a much easier way than people who don't have a positive self-talk yeah so I would say positive self-talk is my favorite self-regulation strategy. Um, then there are many other self-regulation strategies, so, such as um, mindfulness, uh, breathing exercises, exercising as well, um, right. with all the hormones and happy hormones that are released. Mm-hmm. Um, so yeah, resilience and uh, um, self-regulation strategies. This is what would help uh, someone um, thrive despite the, the, the difficulties and life uh, experiences and traumas. I think that's great. I, I like that so much, you know, because like for me, I feel like the, the rougher times of my life, I think what brought me through all of them was focusing on the positive, you know, never really dwelling on the negativity, but always like in anything that I went through, I always pulled something positive out of that. And I would tell my clients, and even when I would speak on stage, I would tell people to look at every little thing that happens to you, but instead of looking at it in a negative perspective, pull one positive thing out of there. Like, how did that make you stronger as a person? Yes, you went through this, but what did it do to make you better than you are today? And I think when people start focusing more on the positive aspects, I think they start, they could fall out of depression. They can fall out of, they can actually even strengthen themselves and gain courage to actually, like you said, move towards achieving those goals. So you're talking about growth. Yes. (laughs) Yeah. Basically learning from whatever you're going through, learning lessons and um, creating rather than uh, destroying right whenever something happens um using it as a, as something that would enable you to create right is this yeah mhm so what are some of the tips that you'd like to tell people today so if people are going through some like you know depression and stuff like that you know and they're going through challenges in their lives you know where do they start where do they how do they start improving their themselves where can they get start getting themselves on the right pathway so as i mentioned uh lifestyle um it can be first of all it has to be baby steps because Mm -hmm. when um people feel overwhelmed it's often very difficult to uh implement huge steps so yeah. i would say first of all small steps so perhaps having a huge goal but breaking the goal into um more um achievable ones yes. smaller yeah. ones uh and first of all try and start somewhere whether mm-hmm. it's um journaling mm-hmm. uh, or um gratitude Right. And and this can be um, 
just a few minutes per day. It doesn't have to be uh, for 20 minutes twice a day. Right. This would be the ideal to tend towards, but mm -hmm. just starting somewhere. Right. Um, so yeah, gratitude, journaling, um, anything that would enable someone uh, to have a, or find some optimism. Right. It doesn't have to be toxic positivity yeah. where people are in denial, but just realizing that life is hard at the moment, but there are a few things I can be grateful for. Yes. And um, there are things that I'm looking forward to. And perhaps doing more of the things they enjoy, which is sometimes very difficult for yes. people who go through depression because everything seems uh, pointless and useless. But just trying to uh, rediscover themselves and do a bit more of what they actually enjoy. Yes, definitely. I think that's so important. Because I, you know, I, I even created a journal called the Positivity and Gratitude Journal because I, I feel that we we do, you know, in, in our country especially, we, we've given so much that sometimes we lack gratitude and we are we are more susceptible to say, I want, I want, I want. And then instead of just being, having gratitude just for the little things in life, because I feel like you, you don't re sometimes realize how lucky you are until... Sometimes the little st things when we're they're taken away from us, we realize how much they meant to us, you know, so just having gratitude, just going outside and be able to breathe the air outside or look at a flower, you know, or just smell the roses, you know, anything, you know, um, we should, you know, take time out, I think, to, to just have more gratitude and, and to practice gratitude, because I feel like that changes us for the better. Yeah. And there is also mindfulness. Yes. Um, and as you mentioned, just noticing the flowers and being present. And it can even be mindful coffee for people who drink coffee or tea for those yeah. who don't drink coffee. <laughs> and just just being present and non-judgmental and just observing whatever happens and right. uh, showing appreciation right. for small things. Exactly. Exactly. I love it. I love it. Now you have a website that you have all your information on. What's your website? Uh, my website is sophia.swiri.com. Uh, I'm also on Instagram. Okay. So yeah, um, I, I use Instagram as a way to remove stigma around mental health and uh, also as an educational tool. Uh, so people can find me on social media as well. Oh, excellent. And you mentioned that um, you have also a, um, a a program that you're going to be launching soon. You're just like yes. about almost completed and you'll be launching that program. Can you tell us a little about that program? Yes, absolutely. I am uh, launching an online course, uh, which is going to be uh, more focused on the fast therapy so it will be giving uh, people uh, steps and uh, concrete steps to follow uh, to, for their uh, mental health and, uh, and well-being. And uh, this would give uh, more details about what exactly it means uh, to uh, have a more functional approach or what awareness means. Or, because I've mentioned what the letters stand for. Right. But it might sound a bit abstract uh, said this way, uh, but uh, the, um, the online course will give um, uh, a very detailed uh, um, approach uh, mm -hmm. in order for people, whoever experiences anxiety, depression or burnout to regain energy and focus and um, yeah, and reconnect to themselves and, 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 and yeah, and have a, a, a stronger sense of self or just come back to the, themselves. That sounds amazing. That, and do you know, when, you, when are you, when is your goal to try to have that, that, um, that program out? That well, hopefully course? it will be in August. 
Oh, excellent. So I'm looking forward to seeing that. And once again, can you just tell everybody your website name so they can remember it and then go and check it out today? Sure. Uh, www.sophiaswiri.com. Sophia dot sweary.com so s-o-f-i-a dot s-o-u-i-r-i dot com and I think it's so good that you're working to try to get the stigmatism out of mental illness because there is nothing wrong with having mental illness and they shouldn't they should not be labelized or categorized because everybody has something in life and we really shouldn't you know judge others because everybody has something and we should respect others and try to help others and not try to judge others. So I think that's great that that's one of your goals that you do, you know, to help others. So yeah. thank you. Yeah, and you mentioned the judgment. Um, mm -hmm. I, I, my view is that people often judge themselves mm -hmm. and because they judge themselves, they have a tendency to judge others. Yes. Uh, so perhaps, one a last tip that I would give uh, for people to make it a bit easier uh, would be to be more compassionate and practice a bit of self-compassion. Yes, definitely. I think that would be very, if people could do that, I think the world could be, be a better place, you know, and I think that's one thing we lack that we all need to work on, you know, and, you know, everybody slips up here and there, but really, try to show more self-compassion to yourself. And then when you show more self-compassion to yourself, you can exemplify, you know, because you, you become a better person, your behaviors will then, you know, shine through and then you could be a better person and help others in, in that sense too. So yes, definitely, definitely. Thank you so much, Sophia, for being on the show. I loved having you on. I think you gave such, you know, wonderful input and you your advice was outstanding. So thank you so much for being on the show. Thanks, Stacey. You have a great day. Thanks, you too.